Can you please tell us about your work here in Cyprus, uh, helping the C, uh, CMP, please? Yes, yeah, we're um, we're here to help the Committee on Missing Persons um, with their investigations, and we are helping them by using a, a geophysical technique. Um, this is this is a this is a way to look um, under the ground without having to do an excavation or before an excavation. So it's it's useful for um, mapping things underground, so you can better plan where to do uh, excavations. You're doing more consultancy, from what I heard. Uh, what exactly do, is your part in helping? Uh, the team. Yes, so um, yeah, we work um, for a consultant in Canada, and we um, we use geophysics for all kinds of different investigations, for geotechnical investigations, for building buildings, um, but we also do them for archaeology studies and forensic studies. Have you had any luck so far? Have you no? Uh, located any disturbances in the ground that may lead to the CMP uh, evaluating whether to look into? Well, we're still at early stages of um, analyzing the information. Um, geophysics is just one uh, technique to help determine where are the best places to excavate. You know, we rely on eyewitness testimony and reports um, and old photos. Um, but we we are hoping that with the data that we've been able to get this week, that we can identify areas where there's more likely to be um, a grave, and where there are places where it's less likely to be ah, a grave. So you don't might, want to waste your time in those. Oh, so you might areas. give more specific indication. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, how's uh, what exactly are you looking at this point here? If you can just yes. explain to us yes. what you're doing here. Yes, so this technique that we're using here is called electrical resistivity tomography, sometimes called geoelectrics or ERT. And it involves injecting small amounts of electrical current into the soil, and then you measure the resistance of the ground at different locations. And different types of soil will conduct electricity um, with different electrical resistivities. So you can use this method to distinguish different types of soil. And we will we collect our data along a, a line like this, and then we create a model that is like a vertical slice through the ground, a cross section that shows you how the electrical resistivity changes with distance and depth beneath this profile. And that can show you things like where the original ground uh, is and, and where it's been filled in with other materials, which is which is. Um, good information to have for uh, archaeology investigations. Definitely. Uh, how big an area does each line cover? I mean, uh, do you have to yeah. go slowly, uh, inch by inch, let's say, or it covers a bigger area? Yeah, so this profile we have here, it's 120 meters long. Mm -hmm. And once we have everything connected together, mm -hmm. we'll use our measuring box to put electricity through different combinations of electrodes and the whole process takes about uh, 30 minutes to 45 minutes to collect one line mm -hmm. and then we'll we'll move to another line and, and set up again and collect another um, data set and so we'll have um, in the end we'll have several vertical slices through the ground oh. so that we can we can see how things change in three dimensions oh okay so you you're going randomly you mean um, not so much randomly. We know that um, this area here, um, there used to be ravines or valleys cutting into the landscape. And then there was this construction here for the construction of this, this football pitch. Mm -hmm. It was filled in. And we're looking for where are those r ravines that were filled in because they're mm -hmm. potential sites oh, of, of graves. And when will you be able to provide all the information to the CMP? Well, we're meeting tomorrow to discuss mm -hmm. the results, and we'll analyze it together. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to draw some conclusions tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've been in Cyprus for a week now. Uh, 
and today's the last day of working on the field. Can you tell us about this week? Well, it's always um, interesting to work with a variety of different organizations. Here I'm working with the CMP, and we've been looking at a variety of different sites and trying to utilize those different tools that we have to look into the subsurface to better uh, focus in areas for excavation. This week, in which locations have you been? Have you been on, on both sides? Can you tell us a little bit more? And uh, if what you've got, uh, gathered so far is uh, optimistic to give information to the CMP that could evaluate for possible excavation areas? Yes, uh, we've, we've done two sites in the north, two sites in the south. Uh, worked on a variety of places where everything from pavement to uh, a lot of gravel in different sites um, and as, as we're seeing here on a soccer field. So a variety of different types of landscapes um, and what we're trying to find is where humans have dug into that surface. Um, I'm trained as a physical geographer and what I would take a look is at that landscape and where humans would have cut into those areas. And we can take similar examples from other places in the world. For example, First Nations in North America and also the Holocaust. We've done a fair amount of work. And what we're trying to use is these, these different tools to help out the archaeologists to do their work. We try to focus that in. Um, our job is to pass along that information and then they have to make decisions. Today you're working with two machines here in this field. And why are you using two machines? What we often try to do is, is use, again, uh, different pieces of equipment. We have ground penetrating radar that we're using. Uh, we're using a lower frequency antennae to look deeper and a higher frequency antennae that we've just put on to look shallower in the near surface. We're also using electrical resistivity tomography or ERT and what that helps us to take a look at is what's the resi resistivity or conductivity of the rocks around this area with the material, those soils. And between the two techniques, we can try to focus in on better areas to focus in on uh, so that we can take a look at those sites. Yes, so what we have here is a piece of ground penetrating radar. We have a transmitter and we have a receiver that sends a signal into the ground. And those reflect off layers in the subsurface and those will be transmitted through the wire here. And Connor over here has a console and he can see the data real time and take a look at places of chain, places of disturbance, places that might be different. Uh, what we've been done at, done at several sites here is we collect a whole bunch of parallel lines to each other. And as we collect those parallel lines to each other, we can now put that into almost like gaming software where we can now image and cut across the surface and now we can see inside the earth and we look for patterns, things that are not maybe a square we look for, or maybe an oval. We take a look that that normally would not be there. Humans have done something in the subsurface, and those are potential sites for the archaeologists to take a look at. So uh, what would you say about the future of uh, these kind of machines? And uh, as people grow and they forget and they you don't know where to look for, do you think that these machines can really help in, in the future and now? I mean, I've been using geophysics as a, as, a, as a geographer, and people said, why do you need to use that? We, we know how to do those things. Um, we have worked in archaeological sites um, in a variety of different places. I mean, just across waters here in Israel. But when we started taking a look at, as people get older, and we have this in the First Nations within North America, we have this in the Holocaust where people have remembered certain sites and they say, well, it's somewhere in that field. Um, or we believe a trench was over there. And we hear similar stories here um, of talking about, we remember it's in this field. And we try to focus that in as saying, in what part of the field? And these geophysical techniques allow us to eliminate areas of where those sites may be and allow archeologists to focus in on the more promising areas. So I think this is a huge future in the disciplines and the conferences that I go to. Uh, these are what tools that people want to learn about um, and they want to utilize. Uh, one example I can give you is that the Bureau of Indian Affairs in, in the United States just purchased five units because they believe this will be the tool for finding missing persons. 
and and they learn and they will have their officers and their archaeologists learn about that. I was surprised that they made that investment, but I think it's a very smart investment to taking a look into the future. At the end of the day, it's also a humanitarian task for you guys. Yes, very true. Um, both Connor and myself, as well as Alistair and Zach, um, I'm, I'm teaching at a university, I'm a professor. Uh, Connor is at, at university. Um, and then to the other two, I work for a company, VGC. And um, we do this because we believe in it. And we do it at a variety of different sites in the world. It's my second time back here. And I think by interacting with, with the individuals on CMP, I think, you know, we're moving forward. We're showing different tools at different sites. Alistair and Zach joined us this year. And, uh, you know, no one is making money doing this. Um, and I think, I think as we move forward and train people, I think that's the way forward.